Well, everybody, thank you for being here. And Ellen and I want to welcome our guest, Hogart. Hogart uh, is a friend of mine, and, um, and I knew he was a great astrologer, but I never knew how impactful astrology could be. And um, it's just recently since I was, um, I started studying astrology in terms of my relationship patterns that I was shocked by how accurate it was and how how much the planets are impacting me, but not just me, but also even the people that I was interacting with. And that's when I had a reading with Hogarth and it was very insightful, was very positive. And then I gave a gift to Ellen as a birthday gift. I gave her an astrological reading and it was so insightful that we, that we decided to interview him about what is going on in the collective because one of the reasons why I wanted to work with Hogarth is because in 2018, uh, he already knew that something big was going to, like there was going to be a big meltdown in 2020. And he even had it in his blogs and in his videos. And, but he just didn't know what it was. And apparently all the astrologers knew this already. And so right now, um, the last interview was very insightful. There were so many gems in that interview about how we were all going through the dark night of the soul because of the planetary movements and how, you know, this is comparable with the last time that actually the Roman Empire fell down and how it was really very much about the US. And uh, right now, um, those, those Mars has moved away from that specific constellation, but there's a few constellations going on and I'm definitely feeling it myself and maybe you are feeling it yourself as well. And this is the triple retrograde, uh, Mercury, Venus, and um, uh, no, not Mercury, sorry, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. Mercury is later on. And, um, and, and we really wanted to hear from Hogarth, you know, apart from you know, the fact that people think astrology is just astrology, I could just ignore astrology. I actually realized that when you ignore astrology, you're going to be fall victim to the unconscious ways that these planets force you to change. And when they force you to change, we very often don't want to change. Very often we go into victimhood, we go into blaming and we go into like trying to control a situation and trying to make somebody else change. And actually right now, what, what I think I'm learning from astrology is that these um, the changes that are, that are indicated at the start, they affect us all. And um, they have specific meaning. And when we understand the meaning of it, and that's where Hogarth is so good, we can actually turn around the unconscious, um, more uh, destructive ways that it can manifest in your life to more positive ways that it can manifest in your life. And so, Ellen, is there something else you would like to add? Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just curious what, <laughs> so I haven't, besides the call yesterday with Hogarth to sort of prepare for this, I've been sort of like, uh, because I was like, oh my God, the three planets retrograde. So I'm like, okay, let's just talk about what does it mean that those three planets are retrograde and what does it mean for us? And is it like this storm that we're in or, uh, and like, how can we sort of manage this time? So I just feel like, um, yeah, I'm going into this with the open mind and uh, beginner's mind. And um, yeah, I'm just curious, like, about everything, actually, because um, it's, yeah, for me, astrology is always so sort of difficult to comprehend. So I feel like I learn little bits at a time, even though I've been studying it for a long time already. I feel like I still don't know anything. So I feel that way always <laughs> with astrology. Um, so yeah, I just love every time we speak and learn from you, Hogart. And uh I just want to learn from you and experience and know what this retrograde thing is all about and <clears throat> this unique situation we're in right now. <laughs> oh, cheers. Thank you. Um, well, it's, um, I mean, wow. 2020, <laughs> what a year so far. Eh? I mean, it's kind of, um, like I said, the, uh, the astrological community have been anticipating this for a while. And um, like I said, you know, end of 2018, but uh, for a lot of astrologers through 2019, they've all been saying something big is coming. And some people have actually anticipated viruses, etc., and different things. But I think even in the, in the astrological community, there is that element of surprise in terms of the speed and the pace and the fact that it's been so all 
um, encompassing in terms of uh, the effect um, uh, of basically COVID uh, on on the whole world. Uh, but why were we anticipating this? So what what I should what I should explain is is that if you can imagine the solar system is like a giant clock. Imagine it's 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 like it's like a massive clock, and there are many elements. Uh, within the orbits of the planets that are completely predictable. Not always, but, you know, very, very um, accurate. That's why, for example, like clocks like Big Ben, for example, are um, timed according to space time because, you know, when you know the movements of the planets, it's, it's a very, very consistent system. And of course, it's taken billions of years uh, uh, to get there. But when we, when we look at the solar system as a clock, <clears throat> And then the planets, there's different kind of timing parts. Like if we imagine like a, like a Swiss, uh, Swiss, Swiss clock, and you know, you've got all the different elements. You have the springs, you have like the little ball bearings, all the bits that are moving. Mm. And each planet has a role to play in terms of its character and in terms of its timing and in terms of the areas of life that are affected. So when the planets are in certain positions, you can get very similar um, results. So when the astrologers were looking at the planetary alignments and they were looking at the cycles, they could see, um, or you know, we could see that there were big, big cycles coming to an end and very big um, cycles um, starting. And whenever you have, <clears throat> sorry, whenever you have old systems coming to an end, and new things starting logically that is the time in life of some of the biggest changes but the biggest signifiers of those uh, changes are to do with the nodes of the moon which is where the orbit of the um, earth around the sun intersects with the orbit of the moon around the earth and those cause the eclipse points the eclipse points um, set fate and destiny for the whole world and there's certain signs that when the, the, that the nodes are in that are very kind of disruptive. And we've just coming through that now, which is Gemini and Sagittarius. So in that context, so just to get people to understand, the last time that the nodes were in the position that they are now, that was September the 11th. Yeah. And then the time before that, we also had things to do with like um, the AIDS virus, etc. So we're, we're just coming through that period now. So things will get better, but there's still a lot more to come. I think oh. you also said that uh, there was um, the last time it was, uh, was September 11th, but also the crash in 2008, was it? The, the financial yeah. markets crashed. And I remember yeah. it because I just moved to London and then this huge crash happened. Wow, wow. So, um, so in, if we think in terms of that, that clock again, and if we think in terms of um, the mechanism, one of the key mechanisms for the economy is planet Jupiter. Yeah, planet Jupiter. Planet Jupiter, <clears throat> as we know, which is now also part of this retrograde. But if we start with Jupiter, because you mentioned 2008, Jupiter is the planet of optimism of expansion, of philosophy, of teachings, uh, uh, education gurus, etc. But Jupiter also represents the economy at large, particularly the global economy. And Jupiter represents optimism in economies and uh, things moving about. Yeah. And Jupiter, planet Jupiter, in his part of the clock, <clears throat> He spends about a year in each sign. So it takes Jupiter 12 years to come back to the original sign that he was in, give, give or take a month or two, depending on retrogrades, etc. And so it has taken 12 years for Jupiter to come back to the sign of Capricorn. Yeah, sidereal Capricorn. It's, it's, not, in, it's not in Aquarius. Jupiter, in terms of where it physically is, is in the sign of Capricorn. Now, this is very important because planets have certain signs that they either prefer or they do very well in. So all planets do very, very well in their own sign. And they do very well in the signs of their friends. 
and they even do well in signs that are neutral. But you have certain signs where planets are debilitated. And Jupiter debilitated in Capricorn, where it currently is now. So what that means is, what, what does that mean? <clears throat> it means that Jupiter's ability to give those positive results is somewhat compromised. Yeah? Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not in its favorite, it's not in its favorite sign. So like, if you think of it like this way, if you think of the planets as characters or as actors, they change their costumes depending on which sign that they're in. So if you can imagine Jupiter in Capricorn, it's like wearing a very itchy, scratchy jumper. So have you ever worn something that, that's, that's really uncomfortable to wear or there's something that kind of jabs or pinches you in the sides? Yeah. You see, it's, 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 it's harder to concentrate, isn't it? It's harder to relax. Um, yeah. You don't feel as comfortable. Mm -hmm. You can still do your job, but it's not as easy. Now, there is a mitigating factor, which is that planet Saturn rules Capricorn. So whenever a planet is with another planet that is very comfortable, that helps ease, makes that uh, uncomfortable planet feel a bit better, but it still doesn't um, function very well. So in 2008, that was when... Jupiter was, was, in, was in Capricorn. And what did we see? The markets went down again. So it's, what, what's making it even more challenging is that this is also coinciding with the nodes of the moon that I described before. So what we're having is we're having a kind of a stacking effect where the planets and their clockwork are combining in such a way that it's changing a lot of the global energy in a very extreme way. So this is why we really are, the whole globe is, effect, uh, is basically affected, but things will improve. So what, where would you like to start? Would it be Saturn, would it be Venus, or would it be you know, J Jupiter and um, how it affects people? I, I see people are putting in mess, um, questions there. I myself, I'm very interested in how what you explained yesterday is that the planets are, are conscious and they will work through us. Yes. And if we are unconscious, meaning if we fall into certain psychological modes like habits or reactive patterns, and I'm thinking about victimhood, I'm thinking about blaming, I'm thinking about not taking responsibility, I'm thinking about all the defense mechanisms that we have to blame somebody else, even if it's astrology, or blame the governments, or blame our partners, or blame, you know, uh, the economy, you know, that then actually we are not evolving in the way that the planets are also inviting us to evolve. Because you told me something that was really new to me, which was when we come into these transits very consciously, and we're not saying that it's easy, but when we come into them with a conscious mind, and we start to evolve consciously, knowing the opportunities and knowing the threats and knowing the dangers of going unconscious, we can actually, for every planet or every transit, reap the highest benefit. We can either go stay unconscious and stay the old way of being, which created the societies and you know, the lives that we have now. And mm. if we take responsibility, we can actually evolve and actually then you said the planets loosen their grip. And that was so new to me because, um, you know, definitely, you know, I'm, 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 I'm feeling all, you know, the planets working in my life and it's very intense. It's super mm -hmm. intense. Mm -hmm. And I think it's intense for a lot of people. And, you know, what have we've heard from, you know, just Venus, so many people having been cooped up in one family and, you know, a lot of people were having to deal with their, biggest fears and now they have to deal with the relationships that they're with you know whether it's business or whether it's um spouses or marriages or mm. you know the, the the way that they're responding to relationships in general the way that we respond to governments in general and structures are in our lives so i don't know what my question is but i really am interested in honing in in that transformative effect of our responsibility to go into these tra transits with more awareness 
and less of the what I would call the destructive ways that astrology can make us go unconscious because the first reaction is re like responding in a very unconscious way. Absolutely, yeah. So like, yeah, you, you really highlight some um, really important things. So what I'll do is I'll start out by, by describing uh, what is a retrograde, just so that we have um, like a, a basic overview and then um, and in, the, in the physical sense and then also as well um, what, what uh, retrogrades mean broadly and then we can then go down um, into, into, into the planets so then we can look at planet Saturn, then we can look again at Jupiter and then we'll say Venus for last because that, that affects our most intimate relationships. So it, it, because by going that way, we can see Saturn represents the superstructure and then Jupiter represents uh, our sense of hope and optimism and then Venus will affect um, our, our tangible assets and how we feel about our relationships. So first of all, what is a retrograde? So a retrograde is simply, of course, the planets never move backwards physically. They're always going around the sun. Of course, when we get to the outer planets, you know, the, the, the the orbits kind of are slightly different. You know, Pluto swaps a little bit with Neptune. Planet Uranus orbits on its side, but those are side topics. Essentially, the planets are always going, going around. However, a retrograde is when a planet appears to move backwards, where it slows down, stations, and that's very important. When a planet stations, that's when it's at its most powerful. And it's almost like it puts a little stamp on that place before it moves backwards. But because of the our orbit, orbit around the sun and the planets move at different speeds, when the Earth either overtakes a planet or a planet overtakes the Earth, it appears to move backwards in the sky. That's why Mercury goes retrograde uh, approximately three times a year. So if you think of it this way, imagine like when you're either on a train um, and you're commuting and there's a train next to you or a car. And have you noticed there are times when, when a car next to you moves at a slightly different speed, even though that they can both be moving forward, it can look like that train or that car is moving backwards. Have you ever had that sensation when you're looking out the window? That's, that's essentially what retrogrades are. It's just the planets appearing to move backwards at different speeds. However, because the solar system is like a clock, if a planet is moving backwards, then it's the nature of its energy changes. So uh, an analogy that I could use is, is that the planet becomes less extroverted and it becomes a bit more Ref becomes a lot more reflective and introverted in terms of its behavior yeah so so if you, if you think of it that way so when the more that we imagine the planets as personalities and as actors and performers in our life the easier it is to understand uh, their influences so what we have now is we now have three planets that are moving backwards and that are becoming more introverted and reflective, yeah? And then this is affecting um, the behavior of the systems and people all on planet Earth because we need to understand what a lot of people do understand is that it's one of the main hermetic truths, which is as above, so below. And this is why the ancients were able to look at the sky and predict things that, that, that would happen based on the movements of the planets because they all affect us as a, as a kind of like a default uh, mode, as it were, subconsciously. So basically everyone on planet Earth as a basic minimum is being influenced by the planets subconsciously. Yeah, so that, that, just, that just happens. That's just when we arrive on Earth and that's why our charts, our astrological charts reflect the energies at work at the time that we were born. And that's why it's, it's a star map, a star map. 
And, but within that map, there is a lot of potential. But how much of that potential we can fully realize depends on our consciousness. Yeah. So, and we all know about this, you know, and of course, this is what you discuss a lot, a lot on the channel and, and that, you know, consciousness is, it, it, is, is everything. Um, but it's not the be all and end all. There are many things that are going on um, at once. But what I should explain is, is that in um, Vedic, in the Vedic text, the planets are described as grahas. What does that mean? Graha means the ability to grip, yeah? So when, we're, when we don't know astrology or we're unfamiliar with, a, with, with, with astrology and we're just living out, uh, living out our lives, now we all know the power of the subconscious, don't we? Carl Jung has uh, proved the power of the, of, of the subconscious, psychology, um, healing work, um, personal development. We're all trying to kind of master that subconscious aren't we, in a certain way. So the more unconscious we are, the stronger the planet's grip is in terms of our psychology, because it's almost as if um, we've surrendered a big part of ourselves to their, to their whims and their movements. Yeah. That's why the ancients called them gods, because in a way they, they sort of are, because if you're not aware of, and, it, and it's no one's fault, because of course, um, astrology is a very esoteric art. Um, but when we're unaware, when we're completely unaware of the planets, they, they're completely moving and um, manipulating our subconscious. Um, and it's producing um, its effects uh, in the world. So if we remember that, it's, it's to grip. However, the more we become self-aware and the more that we become aware of our charts and the, and the energies at work, the fates, the karmas, um, the energies that we need to work through or like, um, as I do in my consultations, where the, the points of fate and destiny and we start working with our charts and applying our consciousness consciously, which again is a lot of like when we think of like law of attraction, et cetera, et cetera, which is a part of it. Then what starts to happen is, is that the grip of the planets starts to loosen. They actually start to loosen their grip. And it's almost like if you can imagine uh, as a child begins to develop and grow, and become more sentient and conscious, what, what do we do? As parents, we start to, ideally, we start to let go a bit, don't we? We start to give that child more freedom because it's demonstrating more responsibility. Or for example, if you think of like, um, uh, like a pet or, 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 or a dog on a leash, think of like when a dog is a puppy, what does it do? It's just running everywhere, isn't it? It's running everywhere. It's licking everything. It's a, it's a, and it's just living out its subconscious completely. And there is some beauty to that. But have you noticed that with mature dogs, as as it, as 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 it develops, as it grows, as it learns, have you have you noticed that with older dogs, they tend not to need a leash because they they understand where it is that they need to go. They've got into that rhythm. They're in they're in sync. With, with their owner. So in some ways you could say that it, it's similar with, 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 the, with, with the planets. The more in sync we are with our charts and the more that we understand, ah, these are the energies that are present and we apply our consciousness consciously to, to our life situations, the more freedom that we're given by the planets to, to the extent that our free will can actually take over and actually completely start to transform our charts. And then what actually starts to happen is we start to get blessings from the planets. And that's what we want, the blessings. So what are the, what are the most um, difficult ways of people not, like even if we're conscious and not like being able to uh, catch their pattern because I think this is really where, you know, when you talk about, let's say, business owners and they need mm -hmm. to make decisions and they're procrastinating or they're in fear and they're not elevating their consciousness, then I can imagine, 
you know, Jupiter having this, this world, worldwide effect or a Saturn coming in um, and then uh, the Venus with business, you know, business contracts, there can be so much that you can be stuck with. How could somebody like that, who's impacted in many areas of their lives, understand how to work with the challenges? Like I, I had to look up Venus retrograde and mm -hmm. when I read up on it, it became very clear to me that Venus retrograde is all about unfinished business in our wounds. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a lot of awareness, a lot of responsibility to look at, wow, I'm being faced with all the unfinished business in my wounds. And it seems like a big theme for all of us in 2020 to really look at all the skeletons in the closet, the yep. things that we'd rather blame other people for, and the things that we don't want to look at, they're all coming up to be, um, to be reviewed. And so how would a person undergoing these issues, whether it's in any of the areas in their life, how can they be very um, rigorously um, honest about what is going on is actually a huge opportunity, but also if they don't take it, there's something that's, that they're going to be recreating again. And, and, and because the planets are forcing us in a way to wake up. Mm -hmm. Well, first things I would say just just to, to, to everyone, just um, and particularly at this time, is that uh, everyone is in the same boat, quite literally. <laughs> For the first time in human history, pretty much everyone is in the same boat. So uh, understand that, that there are elements that are, that are beyond our control. The second one is, is that... Um, being a human being is not easy, you know, but being, so if, if we come from the concept that we are um, a, a, a spirit of light and energy that's having a human experience, if we, if we come from that perspective and we see earth as a school, because really we're, we're in earth school because we're all spiritual beings. We're all immortal, immortal, but we're in earth school and we're going through different karmas and different lifetimes. And uh, our goal here is, is to evolve and grow so that we can um, evolve our spirit and essentially try and create a, a kind of a heaven on earth. Yes. But that's not an easy process. So if you think of it this way, if you imagine earth as a school, um, it it would defeat its purpose if it were not a test. Yeah. If it, if, 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 if it, if it were not a test. So what I want people to do is anyone that's listening to this um, is first of all, forgive yourself for making mistakes. Yeah. We need, we need to have not only compassion to each other, but also compassion to ourselves for making mistakes uh, and not being fully conscious of everything that happens to us in our life because it takes time because part of when we when we are here on earth if, if people do do believe in a reincarnation and many people do but there's more and more evidence to suggest that that is the case and astrologers are sort of ahead of the curve on this because we can actually look at the charts and see what what a lot of the past life issues were but one of the conditions of being here is forgetting yeah we forget you know, we, there's, there's, there's so much of, of, of our power, of our light and everything uh, that we come here to express on earth that, that, that we forget. So in a way, we can see that our time here on earth is, is a kind of a remembering of who we truly are. And the, the chart really helps us understand that journey that our soul is on. And that's why the North Node shows the journey that we're on. So first of all, people have to forgive themselves for, you know, uh, being blown off track or being triggered, et cetera, and falling into subconscious uh, ways of behaving because that's level one. We all start off unconscious to a greater or lesser degree. Childhood, uh, for example, is largely an unconscious experience. They say it's not up until pretty much the age of seven slash eight that the brain waves in a, in a child's mind starts to start to change and we start becoming more sentient and conscious. They say actually childhood is very much almost like being in a state of hypnosis. 
That's why what happens to us uh, when, when we're children and, the, and our environment has such a profound effect, because it's like a state of hypnosis where our life experiences program us deeply, but also at the time, it's also when the planets have the strongest grip. Because like I said, when we're subconscious, that's when the planets have the strongest grip. And that's why so many um, of uh, those kind of karmas or those um, issues tend to affect us more in childhood. Yeah. And it's, and it's always the case. So we're always in a way kind of having a little bit of an uphill struggle to become more conscious and to become more, to become more free. So in terms of being able to, to, tackle that and unravel those those scenarios the 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 goal of course is is becoming more conscious so that's why the ancients said anyone and that means anyone that has any kind of education of any sort yeah where they've gone through some kind of structured education they said those people should at least know the basics of astrology so that they can basically free themselves and this is something that um, met all the ancients basically knew. They knew this. And what's happened is we have these grand cycles of where human consciousness goes through peaks and troughs. So we're just coming out of a point, which is called Kala Yuga, where human consciousness has been quite low. So people forgot about um, the power of astrology. And they gave a lot of their power away to certain institutions. You know, we can debate about what those institutions are, but we can talk, for example, about, let's say, organized religion, which is a, a very structured way of organizing thought. And religion has done wonderful things. It's done amazing things. Uh, but it has made it more difficult for people to take individual responsibility for their own conscious development. Yeah. Astrology helps us take responsibility for our conscious development. And then when we look at the chart and then when we see, oh, this, this thing happened because I was acting in this way and that way, then our lives begin to make sense. And then we begin to accelerate to a point where we become more free, more conscious and more empowered. So it's very much doing that inner work changing our insides change, changes the outside. And this could take um, many cycles. Yeah, um, uh, it's, that, that's, that's why we keep coming back to Earth, <laughs> essentially. Um, you know, it does, it does take a long time. However, um, when we realize that the more that we know ourselves, when we challenge our own um, triggering behaviors and we ask ourselves why, why we behave in the certain way that we do, but also as well recognizing the behaviors in others, that whole process speeds up and it actually starts to become very powerful. So I'm not saying to everyone, everyone has to become, you know, a professional astrologer and, you know, buy software and look at the movements of the planets all the time. But understanding the basics, when we understand that when planets go retrograde, that this is the time to review things in our life. Um, this is a good time to recalibrate, go over our knowledge, learn new skills. Yeah, this is a great time to learn, learn new skills and basically review and look at, look at, habitual ways of behaving and start to kind of uh, change those then of course we're going to be more empowered so there are many ways of course getting there some people of course have counseling some people go to a life coach um, mm -hmm. some people of course uh, use astrology or whatever method it is but what we've learned isn't it when we apply these things we actually feel better we actually feel more empowered but the astrology will actually show you that energy of your actual life and why you're here and it will give you the lessons more powerfully so that the, those those changes become more profound but also it helps us recognize that everything is a cycle 
everything is um, like a clockwork and so is a person's chart so say for example uh, many of us uh, say if you want to be a millionaire for example and I want to do this I want to do that etc which is of course many people's wish we may also have to accept that that may not be in our chart that may not necessarily be what our soul wants to achieve in this lifetime now it doesn't mean that we that we can't be prosperous that we can't be wealthy we all can but of course there's a natural difference between being quite comfortable and being bill gates you know being a billionaire his chart is very very different so you see when when we start to work with that energy of what our destinies are it also frees us from one of the biggest things that um, undermines our joy. So if you think, what undermines, uh, what's the biggest thing that undermines our, our joy? It's comparison, isn't it? When we compare ourselves to others. And another thing that undermines our joy is should. I should have this, I should be this, I should have this by this point or that point. I should be more successful. I should be slimmer. I should be, do you see how should, 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 should also does a lot to undermine our joy where it doesn't mean should is irrelevant, but the only should that we should, should pay more attention to, <laughs> I'm saying should so many times, is where the, where the North Node of, of the moon is in our charts. And that's the direction we should be going in that will help our soul evolve more. And that's the only should really that matters the most. The others we can calm down on. So when we understand this, it takes a lot of pressure off. It, it gets us to take responsibility for ourselves as difficult as that can be, but what, has, what happens is things start to relax and we actually start going in a state of flow and it makes life easier. I have a question about um, uh, retrogrades for a second because you said it's a time for reflection and reviewing, I think. Does it go for all planets in retrograde or is it particularly now because there's so many planets uh, retrograde at the same time? Because Mercury retrogrades three times a year, right? Is that also for review? Um, I, 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 absolutely. So when uh, a planet um, goes retrograde, what it means is that what that planet symbolizes in terms of this, this, this clock, those aspects then need review. So if we think of it this way, and this is part of why this is, why is what's happening now on planet Earth is so profound. Uh, and I just wanted to thank the person that, that, that wrote they're saying that they, they would need a consultation with me so I'm more, more than happy to um, so basically if only one planet is going retrograde then essentially it means that part of, of life that that planet um, represents needs to go into review so if we think Mer Mercury retrograde it happens so often we're quite used to it but if we think it's things like oh the email uh, the email doesn't get sent or we have to be more aware of our communications, or we need to make sure that um, things are backed up on our hard drive, for example, and maybe travel plans go awry, or we lose our keys, or we lose um, our plane ticket. Do you know what I mean? Uh, stuff like that, because Mercury covers kind of communications. With, with these retrogrades, the reason why it's so significant is because Saturn is the planet of structure, of governments, of organization, long-term planning, and how we navigate systems. So we know already because of the, of the lockdown, Saturn is the planet of lockdown, so it's caused lockdown in combination with the nodes of the moon. So we've seen what havoc that has caused, and that's just one planet. <laughs> so then if we think Jupiter, optimism, teachings, um, essentially like the money markets, that's now also retrograde. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the economy, aren't we? We're looking at all of these, all these different elements. And on top of that, Jupiter is also in its sign of debilitation. 
So that's repeating as well. So we're having coronavirus on top of kind of 2008, yeah? And then with Venus also going retrograde, uh, just like Angelique, Angelique was saying, all of a sudden we're having to explore our emotional wounds, yeah? We're also, yes, <laughs> we're also having to explore and review our relationships because why? We've been locked up in lockdown with um, people for a long time. Now, if we really get along with those people, say like uh, the Venus in your chart is very strong and you know it gives a lot of luck and fortune in terms of those relationships were already working quite well. Well, well done, you know, th thumbs up. But even then it's a test. But imagine if you're locked up with someone that you don't want to be with <laughs> or someone who's driving you up the wall. So naturally, as lockdown reduces, because of course Saturn is the planet of lockdown and he's going backwards, what's happening? The barriers are starting to come down. Naturally, people may be asking themselves, hmm, I've learned a lot about my relationships over the last few months. And maybe I'm reviewing that. And it doesn't even have to necessarily even be romantic relationships because it could be friendships as well. Who have we been in touch with? Who's been most important to us o over that time? Um, who's been in touch? Who hasn't been in touch? It, it doesn't necessarily have to be that literal, but we can yeah. see how lockdown makes us reflect on our relationships. So the time is now. Does it mean that uh, humanity is now also more evolved that we can handle something like this? Because it seems like it's so much at once, like all these, like we've had this before, like we've had to review these wounds and the economic crisis, but now it's all at once. Like, does that mean a small group maybe is like ready for this or a bigger group or I don't know, this feels like. Well, well you're, you're absolutely right. So what this is, is all of humanity is changing at once. We're all, we're, we're all changing at different speeds, but we're all changing at once. And this is the whole uh, point um, of these times, which is because planet Earth Gaia is ascending in her vibration, we need to catch up. You know, we need to be in match, uh, in tune with that, because of course we live on, on, live on Mother Earth. And in many ways, although there's been a lot of tragedy, because there has been a lot of tragedy and there's been a tremendous amount of loss. Um, one of the ways that the planets uh, teach humanity and get us to grow is by giving us some kind of loss in our life. And that's where, um, or, or some kind of quite heavy karma. Um, and that's kind of what, like, what um, the nodes of the moon represent and uh, planet Saturn primarily represents. Some of our karmas are wonderful you know, like, uh, you know, it can be children and it can, it can be marriage, it can be buying a house and, you know, many karmas are pleasant. They're not all bad. But let's think about what it means to be a human being. Uh, what are we? We're fallible. We're forgetful. Um, we're habitual. <laughs> we like to stick to our routines, don't we? We like to stick to what we know. Um, and study after study after study has proven the thing that human beings fear the most, even more than discomfort or you know, death or anything like that, is change. We collectively as human beings fear change and we resist change to the extent that the only way to get us to change the planets almost have to gang up and force humanity collectively, boom, to change, yeah? And what's happened is because if we think, if we think of the environment, yeah, we know that there's been climate crisis and stuff like this for decades now. Have we changed? <laughs> no. Some of us have. <laughs> yeah, some of us have changed, but how do we get the world to change? So when we look at this uh, from this vantage point, and this is why 
um, astrologers anticipated that there will be huge change on planet Earth because so many planets are involved. So we have the coronavirus and that swept forward, you know, while the planets were moving forward. And now we have a lot of planets going retrograde. So it's like the tide coming in and the tide coming out again. And we're having this rocking motion to get humanity um, to basically up, upgrade and come up to the next level. So we, are, we, have the, we know this now. We know that we're in this um, uh, time of review. So this is an important time. We're empowered because we know this now. Some people aren't into astrology and don't know it. How do you suggest we review and how do we, and so the goal is to change. Like, okay, yes. so review and then not do anything with it. The goal is to review and then change. So do you have any suggestions on how to like review our lives at this time? Yes. How to actually change? Yeah, so one of the best, one of the best things to, uh, to do in this, in this uh, period is to learn something new. Yeah, learn something new. Something that's going to add to your pr either mental, emotional, spiritual, physical mindset. It could be one thing, it could be several things. But what I would say is this is one of the best times to learn new skills. Yeah. So like, for example, if um, a lot of people here, of course, will be interested in learning and teachings and meditation and, and stuff like that, already quite a proactive group, already a group that understands that inner work is important. But if we think of the axis of, um, of Gemini and Sagittarius, Rahu, the North Node, is currently in Gemini. And it's moving out in September, it will move into uh, Taurus, but it's still in Gemini. Gemini is the sign of practical and communication skills. It's the sign of languages. It's, it's, it's the sign of um, the hands, um, being able to get stuff done. So what people should do is, is look at their life, look at their life and look at all the practical things that they can do or teach themselves that they think is going to make their life better. Yeah. So for example, if someone has a business and we think of Gemini and skills and communication, Gemini is also a sign of business. Yeah. So maybe, maybe this is the time to um, update and review marketing skills. Yeah. Communication skills. Maybe this is the time to kind of call up uh, contacts, yeah? Maybe this is, this is the time to collaborate. So say like what we're doing right now, this is completely Gemini, yeah? It's the complete, uh, completely Gemini because it's um, communications, tech, and it's also collaboration and the exchange of information to give us skills to upgrade. So doing stuff like this, so anyone that's got a business, Think of your business contacts, even maybe even contact people that are rivals. Yeah. People that you maybe you've even been in competition with, because guess what? They're going to be in the same boat too. And this energy is about um, collaboration. So this could be a really good time to actually um, look not only at our friends, but also our competitors and think, right, what's the best way that we can move forward? And collaborate with one in each with one another to help each other's business as lockdown begins to reverse yeah also as well um, for people that are watching when they review their skills if we think planet Jupiter is the planet of teaching so think what can I teach what knowledge do I have that I can teach to others and share with others that could may have a monetary value or at least makes a contribution in some way to, to the collective. That is also a very good use um, of uh, the energies as well. Because when we educate and when we teach and when we help each other, what's gonna happen is when we share that information and that knowledge, because uh, Jupiter is also knowledge and that optimism with each other, what starts to happen is as the lockdown starts to reduce, it's, it's the, the mental and emotional and spiritual energy is already pushing forward in the right direction. Do you know what I mean? So when people um, reopen, they'll be more successful. 
Are there any people here that have any questions, maybe, um, you know, about any of the planets? Um, so Saturn, for instance, how could that show up in a personal life of somebody? I know Venus, your relationship's always quite tricky. You know, yeah. there's a lot of like, you know, how much work do we need to do to actually understand our role in, in relationships and how sometimes, you know, sometimes people come as a lesson, sometimes they come for a period and, yeah. you know, so many lessons to learn in Venus. And I'm sure yeah. we're collectively, we're going through quite, quite a lot of, um, transformation much needed transformation and upgrade of our the ways we perceive love and the ways we perceive you know um happiness in love and um the definition of love the definition of romance and all of that but how you know so that i think it's very easy for me to grasp how we can get stuck there but what is it in saturn how can saturn show up in our lives um let's say we're a yeah. business owner or you know uh, maybe we need to make a decision, you know, like um, to stay in a job, stay in a relationship or, you know, because Saturn is ruling structure, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, and I just saw a quick question where someone was asking, how does Jupiter operate in the collective? I'll quickly answer that, which is that planet Jupiter, planet of optimism and, and expansion um, in the sign of Aquarius, the Aquarius is to do with the people, the collective, um, our larger social networks and groups and how we interconnect uh, with, with other people at a more kind of at more or, of a distance. So when Jupiter is in Aquarius, it can bring a lot of optimism and a lot of expansion to those things. So it's great for networking. Someone who's got got that there would be very good at networking. Um, but that's just a little brief thing. Um, but going back to Saturn, okay, so Saturn is a scary planet, yeah? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's just admit it. It's a scary planet. Um, in Indian astrology, and, and for most people who understand what Saturn symbolizes, it, it's the, it's, you know, it can be very challenging, and it's the one that we run away from the most, yeah? And, and um, why? Why do we run from Saturn? Yeah. Why do we? Why do we see Saturn in the chart? We're like, oh, oh my goodness! I need to es escape. I don't want to deal with that. The reason why is is that Saturn is is responsibilities. Yeah. It's our karmas. It's our responsibilities. It's maturity. It's the it's the planet of um, it's the planet of woe, in the sense of um, our struggles. Yeah. So what do we do as human beings? You know, like if we think of Venus, yeah? If we think of Venus, what's Venus? Venus is pleasure, the good life, the things that we enjoy, um, good food, drink, music, you know, um, love. And, you know, we all, lo we all love those Venusian things, don't we? Who doesn't want the good life, yeah? Who doesn't want to have nice food and all these various diff different things? But what's interesting is, is that, Saturn, as uh, uh, frightening and as difficult as he can be, Saturn is actually very important for business. Yeah? Why? Because there are three business planets primarily. Saturn, Venus, and Mercury. They're all friends, and they're all part of the business structure. So if you think of it this way, planet Saturn is your business plan. Yeah? how you plan to approach and go forward with your business in the short, medium and long term, yeah? But especially the long term, that's the business plan. Where you expect your business to be in a year, two years, three years, or even 10 years, yeah? So he's like the structure and the logistics uh, of that, the nitty gritty, the professionalism, yeah? Venus, uh, if we, we Venus in, and we'll focus specifically on Venus for the last bit, but Venus is the contracts, yeah, the business relationships, the to and the fro, uh, how we balance ourselves out and how we are fair in our interaction with others. This is why planet Saturn is exalted in the sign of Libra, which belongs to Venus, because it's about commitment to contracts and fairness, yeah? And then Mercury is like the accounting and the marketing departments. 
he looks he looks at the the logistics he would be running he would be running the marketing campaign the email campaign he will be making sure that all the technology and all the bits and pieces work together so you can see how harmonious those planets those planets are uh, in in that relationship so saturn represents that our structure but also as well our discipline so um Angelique, I hope, hope you won't mind me saying, but like, for example, in, in your chart, I think you have Saturn in Aries. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me, are, are you okay for me to, to mention that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Cause I don't uh, know what it means. <laughs> all right. So I'll explain. And this, this is something you'll find. Let me just make sure. Yes. All right. So if I show your chart here, all right, this, this is, this is Aries. And this is Saturn here, yeah? Now, this is a very interesting combination because if you think, um, Aries is what? Pioneering, yeah? It's doing things uh, that are new or innovative, moving forward, um, uh, uh, you know, energy, optimism, wanting, wanting, wanting to strive. And basically, Aries is, is quick. It's, it, it likes to do things quick it's speed and its ruler is mars yeah but saturn likes to do things slowly yeah saturn likes to take its time review and or you know make sure all the details are right because saturn is actually a, a very perfectionist planet so sometimes when saturn is a little bit too strong in a person's chart they can be too perfectionist yeah but if we think the energy of Aries and the energy of planet Saturn sort of conflict a bit with each other because Aries wants to move forward at pace and Saturn wants to slow things down. So anyone that's got Saturn in Aries, one of the areas of life that they have to deal with is impatience. <laughs> yeah, because Aries wants to do things quickly and Saturn wants to do things slowly. So what happens is when you look at that as, as, as a life pattern, it, is, it means taking time to structure oneself in a way that one can become um, a true pioneer and leader and innovator. So what it means is in order to, to maximize that, that, that Aries energy, we need to add a bit of structure. But because it's the... It's a, it's a challenge. We may struggle with that uh, in the early part of our life. Do you see? Whereas, of course, you know, of course, time has gone on. And of course, you, you've added a lot of structure to your life. The fact that we're even here is um, showing that structure. But it's still pioneering, innovating, isn't it? Trying to take yeah. people to new places. So you can see it's, 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 and that's why I say planets are like, personalities they're like actors they change their behavior depending on which sign that they're in their essence stays the same but the style changes so in in terms of anyone that's watching now that is in business it's very important that they know where saturn is in their chart because when they start dealing with the either the challenges or the blessings of saturn in their chart it's going to help their business Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody was asking, when does Jupiter go direct again? Okay. So Jupiter will go direct again on the 13th of September. Now you might be thinking, oh my goodness. Uh, what was this? Uh, yours in the fourth house in Shatabisha. That, that's interesting. I'll, I'll go into that. So you're probably thinking, oh my goodness. Jupiter retrograde until September, you know, oh, you know, nightmare. However, we need to understand is, is that Jupiter is going to retrograde into the sign of Sagittarius, which belongs to him. Yeah. So it means Jupiter is going to have a costume change. So just like in a concert, you know, say like you're watching a big pop star or, you know, some, some, someone like that. What happens? They like, they tend to change costume, don't they? In different segments of their gig. 
So if you say like, for example, say like you're watching someone like Mariah Carey, yeah, or Madonna or someone like someone, someone very kind of like flamboyant. What happens is there's several costume changes within, within the gig, isn't it? You know, they go off stage briefly and they come back and they're wearing something else and the, and the song changes, yeah? Um, and it's kind of like that with the energy of, of the planets. Sometimes they might be singing a ballad, yeah? Or sometimes they might be singing like a pop song or, you know, depending on where they are. So as um, uh, Jupiter moves backwards through the sky, his energy is going to be changing a bit. So first of all, the most challenging times are like around that time, around about now, when it actually stations and starts to move. As the retrogrades progress over the months, it, 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 it's easier to tune in with that energy. So you will find that the procrastination will start to reduce down because you, it really will dawn on you. You'll be like, oh my God, I actually, I really, there's stuff I really do need to look at. So we will act. But what will happen is at some point in uh, June, I think it's kind of mid, mid June. I've got to find when I, where, where I wrote that, that, that date down. Um, Saturn is going to enter Sagittarius. Yeah which is its own sign. So even though it's going backwards, it's going to pick up strength. And they even say when a debilitated planet is moving backwards, it gets stronger. So what will happen is optimism will start to return at some point. The economy will actually start to get going. Now, is it going to be back to where it was um, pre-corona? Of course not because essentially it is a retrograde, but it doesn't mean that the economy is gonna stay shut. It just means the economy is what? It's under review. So what I would say to people is prepare your business as if, as if you were opening next week, yeah? And go try to go forward with that optimistic mindset of like this, you know, will not stay closed forever, yeah? You know, the bit, the economy is not going to stay closed forever. Just look at the news. What's everyone talking about? Restarting the economy. But we're trying to do it, what? In that Saturnian way, gradually, bit by bit. But it will happen. So people have to prepare as if, and you know, and that's like a, a lot of things of like what Abraham Hicks might, might talk about in terms of law of attraction, you know, preparing your mindset as if it's a reality already. That's very true because... What happens is, uh, as the retrogrades continue to happen, they, they will actually pick up speed, actually. They'll start to pick up speed. So there will be a kind of a momentum that, that, that will come in. So it's not all doom and gloom. And um, Sagittarius, again, is the sign of teachings. It's the signs of gurus. It's the sign of education. So what's going to happen is the kids are going to go back to school. Once the, once the kids start going back to school, those that have children, because Jupiter represents children, are going to be able to go back to work. So do you see that? And then all of a sudden, then we're going to have people that are able to kind of consume things again. You know, um, by, the, by January, I mean, sorry, by June 25th, Venus starts going direct. So that's restaurants, cafes, fashion places, do you see? So even though she's going retrograde, those things are still likely to open. It's just that they're going to be under review. We're going to have it with what? Social distancing. The structures of Saturn will still be there, but it doesn't mean everything completely grinds to a halt because, you know, it can't. You know, we do have to um, have business. You know, people do need to open. So relief is coming. Relief is on the way. It's not all doom and gloom. Are there any things that we should have asked that we haven't? Um, I myself think, you know, um, there was a time in my life when I saw astrology as something that I wanted to avoid and I wanted to blame. Mm -hmm. But as I'm like looking now at my chart and I'm seeing what's going on in my life and also what's going on in the collective life, it feels more like astrology is a guide to the it's almost like a weather report of what is going to happen in terms of lessons, mm -hmm. in terms of opportunities, but also threats if we don't understand the upside of it. 
And so this, um, this not wanting to know about astrology, I think it's just like people that don't want to face, let's say, conspiracy theories. It's coming from fear, I would say. It's coming from not wanting to face that we are, there are more forces driving mm -hmm. us than we would mm -hmm. dare to, dare to um, fit, yeah, uh, accept. But actually, mm -hmm. once we do see, you know, through trial and error, because I'm old enough to see how these things are affecting my life, once we do see how they affect our life, we can actually also start to, um, you know, take that responsibility and really um, reap, reap the consciousness provoking effects of these planetary movements and not be scared by them as they come up. And it seems like the collective is going through so much, ultimately so much at the same time mm -hmm. that it is forcing us. It is almost like pushing us to, to, to it's like yes. um, what they say, a mother, a mother bird pushes their, their, their young to like fly, right? And, uh, but would you say that if we do not become conscious that um, we actually are going to uh, experience the more negative effects, the more destructive effects of these retrogrades or, 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 or are retrogrades more gentle than that? Um, that's, that's, a that's a really good uh, question. Um, what I would advise to people, anyone, kind of kind of kind of like life uh, if we imagine life life as a life as a river yeah there are some times when uh, the water in the river is low there are some times when it's um, or, or high there are some times when the water is moving faster or slower or there's times uh, like I would say analogy now for like life like right now is that the river has burst its banks yeah and the water's everywhere yeah and it's kind of like that with, 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 with the energy, energies of the planets. It's always better to work with the energy of the planets rather than against. Because then you're going with the current and you're going with, 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 with the flow of, of, of life. Because what we've got to remember is, is that those planets are always moving like clockwork. And that's, those, those, those are called transits. So your chart is just a Polaroid, a snapshot of the energies at play that were part of your incarnation this lifetime. But of course, the planets keep going. And of course, there's those, those different planetary periods, like I was talking about with Mahadashas, where certain planets are more in control of your life than others and yield more influence. Yeah. So in terms of um, what happens if we're, if we're not in tune, essentially, we, we become more subconscious, don't we? We become more fear-based. So it's kind of like this, this way. I always say it's like, if you imagine it, it's like a tree. And a, a fruit tree. So imagine, and even, even like with the D9 chart, the Navamsha chart, which I'll, I can explain like later, which is like the X-ray of the planets, that's also seen as the fruit of the tree. So if we imagine the, the lowest fruit is the easiest to reach on the tree, isn't it? Because it's, it's accessible, yeah? So because human beings, as we are, because we tend to avoid our responsibilities, we tend to avoid growing up. <laughs> we like to run away from things because, of course, it's, you know, it's challenging. It's difficult. We tend to reach for that lowest fruit. And planets are like that as well. They have their lowest energies, their middle energies, and their highest energies. So if we think of planet Saturn, planet Saturn is also the planet of fear. But it's also the planet of structure and systems, like I said, which you could say is like the mid-level fruit. But it's also a planet of wisdom and grace. And you could say that's the fruit at the top of the tree. And we always know that because the fruit at the top of the tree gets the most sunlight. No, it gets the most sunlight. So it's the sweetest, but it's the hardest fruit to reach because you have to climb up through the branches of life to get to get to that fruit. And a lot of us, particularly if the tree is very tall, so if you can imagine um, Saturn is also a planet of height, it's, you know, to reach the 
top fruit of Saturn, it takes a long time to get there. We have to climb through a lot of life to get to those kind of golden apples at the top. But my goodness, isn't it worth it once we get there? Because when we eat that apple, those golden apples at the top, we get grace, we get wisdom, we get, um, we're given blessings that are never taken away from us, for example. So as much as Saturn is a challenging planet, it can also be one of the most rewarding parts of your chart. Where Saturn sits, Initially in life, it will be one of the most challenging parts, but it can then, when we transform it consciously, can become one of the most rewarding parts in our chart. Now, what you just described, uh, Angelique, like um, you were saying how you, uh, in terms of your initial view of astrology, being some, something, uh, something kind of punishing, and how now you're seeing that differently, you've just described perfectly the Jupiter rep retrograde. Yeah? Why? Because Jupiter is the planet of philosophy. So you're reviewing your philosophies in regards to astrology. And you're realizing actually there's value in this. And you can see by recognizing that value, how that is expanding your comprehension and understanding of everything that happens in life so you can see like what a blessing by your engagement uh, with astrology you're recognizing that it does have an impact you're now getting blessings but they're coming to you in the in the i in the terms of philosophies yeah your mm -hmm. broader understanding about the world which you can now take forward and use for the rest of your life so do you see that it gives gives that gives that uh, an example and every retrograde planet gives us an opportunity. So we need to see retrogrades also as opportunities. Yes, yes. Yeah? You were saying as well that in Venus, so Saturn's lowest, uh, the lowest hanging fruit is fear, then we go to structure, mm -hmm. discipline, and then we go to wisdom and grace. And for, mm -hmm. and for Venus, the lowest uh, fruit hanging fruit was um, I would say lack of self-esteem, maybe codependency. Um, and then, you know, as we climb, we may be, you know, what is the climb when we look at Venus okay, in terms so, of that analogy? Um, you're, you're absolutely right. I saw there was a question that came in as well, which was asking um, about moon signs. And maybe we can try uh, and address that. Although that, in a way, that uh, that might even be better for, um like a set like a separate uh interview or something because there's there are some obviously there's, there's 12... sorry you need, need to mute somebody yeah. oh sorry uh, what 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 were they asking were they asking about the moon signs i i, I don't understand was that dutch i don't know <laughs> no 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 they were they were just talking to somebody else so oh okay yeah. sorry <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I probably won't go through uh, all the moon signs because, of course, uh, that would take too long. But I can talk about uh, how the moon is affected. But going back to Venus, as you originally asked, yes. So if you think of it this way, of course, Venus in its broadest sense is relationships. Yeah. All sorts of uh, relationships, remote, emotional relationships, marriage, business contracts as well. So if we think, yes, uh, in terms of um, what is the low hanging fruit? So if we think of the sign of Taurus, which is where Venus is right now, this is her sign of rulership. She rules Taurus and she rules um, Libra. So in Taurus, she's very strong, but Taurus also correlates to the second house. And uh, someone's asking about moon and Jupiter meaning yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just finish this point and then we can, um, and then we can look at maybe more specific questions. Um, but the second house is also the house of self-esteem. Yeah, how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. So, for example, the low hanging fruit or Venus, or shall we say the fruit that's on the floor and kind of maybe moldering and all that kind of stuff will be to do with issues of self-esteem our value because um, Taurus uh, slash the second house is to do with our value. So our family values growing up, 
but also how we feel about ourselves. This is why when we, when we look at the second house, we can see how potentially a person deals with their money, yeah? With their tangible assets, their savings, but also as well how they feel about money, how they feel about themselves and how they feel about their value. So the fruit that's dropped on the floor would of course be dealing with issues of maybe like low self-esteem, yeah? Codependency, like, like you were saying, or even things like self-sabotage because planet Venus is a very, very important planet because along with Jupiter, it's also a guru, but it teaches in a different way. Yeah, they, they're not friendly to each other because their styles are so different, but they both are generous planets. So Venus teaches us through our relationships. So what people could find is, is that as we, over this uh, Venus retrogrades, they're having to deal with, with old wounds or issues around relationships that they thought that they had dealt with. Yeah, because maybe in their emotional basket, shall we say, there may be one or two things that were starting to go off that they didn't realize. And it's kind of like, in a way, it's like, because Taurus is the sign of food, but if we imagine it like in relationships, it, it can be like with Venus, it can be like, you know, um, that old bit of cucumber at the back of the fridge that's gone a bit squidgy and moldy, yeah? And we didn't notice it because the fridge was full of different stuff. But then now we're at the point, it's like we're kind of rummaging through the fridge. And this is the time to kind of maybe take out those elements that are not so fresh anymore, um, that are not edible anymore, that are no longer nutritious. So this is a good time to look at our relationships and reevaluate what is nutritious for me? What is, um, what is, what is doing me good or, or, or harm? Or is it a case of that? this fruit is actually is actually okay i just need to wash it under the tap and it can be and it can be it can be consumed just fine so this is definitely a time of of review but not necessarily to renounce for some people it may be the time to renounce because lockdown has made it absolutely clear in their mind that their relationships have to change yeah for some people it's just like oh my god like the second this lockdown is over, you know, I'm off. Whereas for some people, it, it might be more ambiguous. It might just be that we need to change our communication um, to review our own feelings and just check that they're appropriate. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's a lot of people that are asking questions about that are quite personal. But to look at the time, I think that is just going to go beyond the scope of yes. this, this, uh, this, this meeting. So I want you to, we'll be posting the, the recording, we'll be posting the, the website of Hogarth. If you want to um, join us in our um, appreciation game community, we post a lot of stuff there. This is the link. If you go there, the appreciation game feed then we'll approve you and uh, you can also like the conscious world club uh, facebook uh, page we also have a conscious world club uh, facebook group um, so um, and there's you know I, I would say you know booking a session with hogarth is really recommended it's uh it's not expensive at all i think it's, it's really affordable and it's very extremely insightful um, Hogart is one of these people that is very knowledgeable, uh, has an in-depth understanding of psychology as well, so and also has an innate wisdom to actually guide us. Um, so this is why we're talking to him. Yeah, so people are saying, Nadine is saying, I can recommend Hogart. Um, how do you book a session? We will be posting the link, uh, just Binder, mm -hmm. so that you can... Um, We'll be posting the link once we have uh, the... What is your website, Hogarth? Can you just type yeah. it in the message there? Um, yes, so my, um, my website is thearchetypalblueprint.com. And how do I type in the message? I think I'll go to more, isn't it? Um, okay. I'll add it in there. Yeah. How, how do I type in? I'd the add it. Okay. Yeah, there it oh, is. Oh, perfect. 
So um, uh, on there, so um, basically I offer, like Angelique said, I offer all sorts of uh, types of consultations, but just briefly, people can go for um, a main chart reading, which gives a whole overview of, the, of, of what's at work at their life. In their life, they can look at for uh, a comparison reading between two charts or another to see on relationships. But I think the one that might be most relevant to people now, especially with Venus retrograde, which is tangible assets, wealth, money, you know, the good life, etc. Um, it might be advisable that people go for the um, finance reading that I do. So I look at their chart, but from specifically from um, a place of finance. And then we can also as well in that in that consultation, look at the house, the area of life where Venus is going retrograde is going to affect that part. So wherever Taurus is in the chart, and remember I use sidereal Taurus, um, those Venusian um, areas will need review. So um, I just thought I'd put that out there. So yeah, go on the website. If you look at online bookings, you can see all the stuff there. Yes, and I highly, highly recommend it. So Ellen, you have any more questions? Uh, no, it was awesome. Thank you so much, Hogarth, again. And um, yeah, it was just uh, so interesting and I feel more empowered and I know what to do and I feel like I need to do all the <laughs> practical things. I'm gonna review and I'm gonna change. And I'm yeah. gonna, um, yeah, take everything that you taught us and uh, put it into uh, practice. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>